Okay, so we're live with the Friday Hangout, and what we're going to talk about today is content curation, and we're lucky to have the founder and CEO of Scoop It with us today. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, and let's get started. Hi, Janet. Hi, everyone. So I'm uh, Guillaume Bacucius. I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of Scoop It. Uh, Scoop It is a content curation platform that lets you uh, publish and um, create an online magazine on your favorite topics by curating content that we help you find or that you find anywhere interesting on the web. Happy to be here. Cool. Uh, I'm, I'm Steve Farnsworth, uh, the, and on my, I blog at the Steveology blog. And I, do, <laughs> I don't have any software. And so. I don't but have do, any software either. So. But I do curate. There you go. What do you use to curate, Steve? An RSS feed and Twitter. Mm -hmm. So you're still doing it by hand. Cool. I, 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 ironically, old school now, right? <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm eager to get you uh, started on Scoop It so that we can have your feedback. And, and um, you seem to be doing uh, already the, the hard work. Um, so hopefully you'll see value in the platform and it can help you save time. And, and, I, you know, I, I asked to join a whole bunch of times. You guys had, had more important things to do. Yeah, and you know, you told me that, and I'm sorry to hear that. Um, it must have been a, it must have been a long time because we so we launched publicly November of last year, uh, so now anyone can sign up. So um, it's true that you know when you when you start a product, um, you want to make it. You know, uh, you know, having a private beta for us was very useful. Um, we try to accept uh, a lot of requests uh, for the for the private beta. I'm sorry we missed you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you're you're part of the people I would like I would have liked to have the, the feedback of. So it was um, it was a screw up on our side, but um, I don't regret having been through the private beta because we we yeah. were able to find the product and, and when we launched we had uh, a tremendous response and we've been growing very fast since then. So it, it helped us get the product right. So. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what made you start Scoop It? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, so it's a good point. So we started this, um, Mark, my co-founder, and I and the team, because we felt frustrated by um, social media um, for, for a number of reasons. One was that um, you know, social media promise was that everyone can, be, can become a media. And we felt that that promise was actually technically true. Anyone can go and set up a blog or anyone can go and set up a Twitter account. But in reality, it takes a lot of time and it's difficult for most people because they are, not everyone is a natural born blogger. Uh, not everyone is a natural born writer. I was, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, how do I get, you know, a hundred people to follow me on Twitter, a thousand people to follow me on Twitter? Why would people care about me? And, and those were hard questions that we spent a lot of time working on. Um, and, and the other aspect we, we saw was that um, social media is, is generating a lot of noise because it, it works on top of social networking. And we often confuse the terms, but I think they're different. Uh, social networking is about the social graph. It's about who I went to college with. It's about con people connections, people I, I did business with that are going to be my LinkedIn contacts. And that's great. That's awesome. But it doesn't mean we share the same interests. And so we felt we needed to create something that would help uh, people move from the social graph to the interest graph, which is how do I um, publish content on my interests and meet with people and find an audience of people who are also interested in the same topics. So the, the, those two things made us create a platform that would be um, a social media, but on a topic-centric model where people would not be creating content, but curating content, and, and where the platform would help them do that in a very optimized way, a very efficient way, um, uh, you know, making them save time doing that and, and have a better impact, helping them find this, this audience that cares about the same uh, interests in a, in a quick way. I think I started using it uh, pretty early. Um, and for me, it's kind of a dashboard that I use to get recent news, current news. Um, I'm going to see if I can share a screen here because it's really, it's pretty cool. 
um, the ability to be able to sort through content pretty much in real time. Um, you know, I was in Scoop It offices this week, and one of the things that I think that was really interesting about it is is that I use social mention for everything, um, and social mention is really great, but it doesn't filter. Um, and so what I can do with uh, Scoop It is really filter those things down. Um, I just want to show you, let's see if I can show this window. Um, this is a screen from my Scoop It, and to share a story is really pretty easy. Um, all I have to do is find it on my screen. All I have to do is click publish, and I can publish it to Facebook, Twitter, I can put it on my Facebook page, I can send it to LinkedIn. Um, I get a really cool dashboard of information that I can use and I can look to see how many people are really interested in this topic. Um, in this particular topic I've got 532 views. So it ends up being kinda cool that I can really you know share useful stuff um, and filter it to get the information that's really um, useful to me. So that's that's basically how I use it. Yeah, that's, that's Steve. Tell us. Sorry, go ahead. I just kind of like to hear from Steve what the curation process is. What my my curation process? Um, yeah. So I I I'm a big fan of yeah. RSS readers. I I uh, I have. I curate RSS feeds from blogs and sources that I really like, and and I put them into uh, folders based on the search terms or the kind of blogs they are. And and what I do is depends on the, the way I feel that day. Um, I'll open one. You know, so I literally I have probably a couple of, uh, uh, like a thousand or fifteen hundred RSS feeds at any given time, maybe more. Um, and, wow. and so most RSS feeders don't, uh, readers don't work. I actually use Google Reader, not because it's my favorite, because it just can handle, since it can handle the volume of feeds. And uh, I'll open one up, and I'll, I'll just actually, so I go to kind of a thematic thing, and then I'll, I'll read through the headlines. Uh, having uh, a communications and PR background, if, if you can't make a promise to me in your headline, uh, that says give me give me five more seconds. Then there's no you don't have my attention, and and I, I'm a big believer in that. And that really holds true. When I when I deviate from that, I find that people they can't articulate in the first few seconds. And that's the, and then I, and I I start going through those. I open up a bunch of those posts and read those, and that's how. And then I then share uh, using uh, Hootsuite or Buffer. Actually, mm -hmm. usually a combination of the, of the two. So that's, that's my process. I, I do that in the morning usually. Sometimes in the weekends too. Cool. Um, <laughs> I'm having a hard time turning off the screen share now, so we're going to stare at this for the whole show every time I talk, which is great because you get to good, get a good look at Scoop It. Um, well, I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'd be really curious, uh, another creation tool, and I can see some immediate differences, but I'd be curious from your point of view about how you see yourself differently from Pearl Trees. If you could, if you could kind of talk yeah. about that. Yeah, and, good. Yeah, thanks for the question. So, um, so what, what you described is actually um, for us what um, you know should be the starting point is is organizing your sources, which is what um, you know Janet has shown us on the screen um, right now. <laughs> so, what, what we've, um, so the way we look Forever. at things, there are people like you who've done a lot of investments, uh, collecting those feeds, who have hundreds or thousands of feeds organized, um, and there are people who who didn't do that. Um, so Scooby helps you be, regardless of whether you one or the other, we help you um, add another layer to that by, if you, if you haven't done anything, um, the suggested content will help you uh, identify sources that, um, that, that works uh, well for you. Um, that's something we have which is pretty unique. Mm -hmm. You can also, it also works with existing sources in a couple of ways. Um, if you like the Scooby interface, you can import your OPML uh, file, so you can import your Google Reader in Scoopit, or you can also stay on Google Reader and use our bookmark lab to, to actually publish stories. Now, this for us is just a starting point. 
The, the additional things that we think are, are really important for curators and that we wanted to bring a solution to is we wanted people to be able to edit. Um, and by that we mean that um, if, you, if you've seen the, um, the publishing window that Janet showed, it lets you edit the title. You, you've mentioned something which to me is really important. The title needs to be good. We have five seconds to get your attention and that's going to go through the title. So I often, and, and our curators do that, I often change the title of an article because I want to bring some context. Maybe Mashable decided to, to say, uh, to give a certain title to a piece of news, but for my audience on a specific topic, on a specific context, I want to give it a different spin. Yeah. Um, and what, what Scoopit also allows you to do is um, all of the posts, all of the stories will have a summary um, with the first sentence of the, um, of the article, just like in any RSS reader. But you can add your own um, comments in that. And you're not limited by 140 characters. You can be as uh, concise or as prolific as you want. So you can give your own point of view. And, and that for us is really essential to curation. Um, to me, there's this filtering, which is um, one part. But the curation aspect means it's also an expression format. And then the last thing that we bring is what we call the curation layer. Uh, most of the time when people share stories on Twitter, um, some people call that curation and I don't want to have a semantic debate. But to me it's essential to, to bring people to your assets, to your web property. Um, if you're actually tweeting links to TechCrunch, it's good for TechCrunch, but how is it good for you? Um, if you do that uh, on Twitter, Maybe people will remember that you brought this, this piece to them and that generates some goodwill. But, uh, but we feel it's better if we bring that to a stupid page that can be uh, presenting all of your topic, all of the related articles. Uh, it's good for you because people can see the context and the related stories and they can see you are an expert of that topic. You're not just sharing a random link. They can see your perspectives. But it's also good for your readers. We, on average, um, Scoopit visitors, so I'm not talking about the active publishers, but the visitors to the Scoopit pages visits on average three pages. Um, if you think about it, that's at least 3x the engagement you have from any direct sharing on, on Twitter, LinkedIn, or everything, because the maximum they can get is just one click, right? Uh, so we know that this system works because it's actually a way for you to show all of your stories, uh, give your context, and also present yourself. Um, with different types of, um, you know, at the minimum you have is they, they see your, your, your picture and they see your name. Um, but we have also premium versions for companies who want to put their corporate brands on those pages and they can customize the look and feel and everything. So to summarize, um, managing sources um, is really important. Obviously, I don't think we'll add much value to you on this because you've obviously invested a lot of time on that, but a lot of people haven't done that, that investment and we help them do that. The second aspect is really around um, the publishing window, how to give that, it, um, that, how to make you an editor. And the third is the curation layer. And by the way, the curation layer is also indexed in, in search engines, which um, you know is, is a big plus because your tweets are either discovered in the next 30, 45 minutes, or they're gone forever. And, and they're not indexed in Google. Same with LinkedIn, same with Facebook. Google Plus is indexed, um, kind of the exception here. But we, we allow you also to get uh, search discovery. On average, we have about 35% of stupid content which is discovered from Google. And, and that's a big plus to our curators. I'm curious, in terms of, of somehow, in terms of how, uh, like people like Janet and I are geeks, and we like to share things because we just like to share stuff. Um, you know, Adam uh, Hellway, who's not here right now, is the same way. We just share stuff because that's just the way we are. But if you're a company and you want to share something internally because, like, you have a – you want to do um, – or a company or an organization where you want to share uh, knowledge with coworkers or kind of more of a closed – uh, group, do you see the tool being used that way a lot now? Are people using it that way, kind of, is less public and more kind of a closed organization? So, so right now, ninety percent of the usage is about public communication. It's it's um, people who wanted to share with um, potential clients, customers, partners, uh, and that's ninety percent of the usage. But yes, this is this is um, 
the internal private sharing is also something that uh, we started to have requests for. Uh, a few months ago, we introduced a private feature. So you can make um, a topic page, a scripted topic, uh, private, and share that either internally or with uh, some people are also consultants, and they, 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 their curation is really you know, intelligence that they want to share with paying uh, clients because they do um, a very precise watch on maybe on the, in the financial market or in a specific industry. Um, so we're, we're not, so, so this is something we're, we're trying out right now. So the feature exists. Uh, people who are interested can um, ask us for it. And uh, we're, we're very eager to try. Um, we don't know if that's going to be a, a main point of the product um, because it seems that the natural thing to do with Scoopit is much more about sharing that publicly on social media. Um, but yes, that's, that's a need we've identified as well. That's well, one of the ways that I use it a lot is with, um, we set it up for clients so that they can track their threads and they can track their topics and whether they use us as social media managers or not, they have content then that they can use. To share out on their channels again you're saying? Yeah, right. So it's a way for that, us to aggregate content for them um, that then they can reshare with their content or expand on their own knowledge base. How, you know what, what I'm curious about now, I know that Scoop it having, uh, it, though I don't have my own account, I have gone and read other people's stuff and then you go to the site and you see that page. Uh, it, one of the things that I'm involved in is, is content. Uh, marketing an awful lot, and and I know that you know one of the things that I really like is curation. How how much of this can can the tool be used specifically to? Um, can you embed something on a website so you're sharing content on on your own web property in terms of your own website for your corporation for the curation part of the the, this, the content you want to deliver? Yeah, so so that's actually um, that's actually touching on our business model and how we do things. Um, so a, a Scoopit page is um, a, a topic page on the Scoopit domain, and that's the free version, and it's free forever. You can use it as much as you want. Um, and, and what happens typically is that a company um, you know, finds out that um, they use the free version, and at some point they see that there is um, uh, a lot of traffic on that page, and um, there, it generates uh, some attention. And at some point, they realize that, um, well, maybe I want to have this on my website. I want to have uh, this on my domain. I want to get all of the traffic benefits. I want to be able to link back to my products and services, generate some leads, have maybe SEO benefits from the page, and all of that. And so that's, that's because we had people you know, telling us that, that we started what we call Stupid Business, which is our premium version, uh, which allows you to white label the page. Um, put it on your domain um, and integrate it with your with your website. Um, that's seventy nine dollars a month, and that's typically what what companies using Stupid uh, end up doing after having tried the free version for some time. But even in the free version, you have we have three ways to actually um, work with Stupid and, and your own properties. So we integrate, for instance, with WordPress and Tumblr. Uh, so that if you already have a blog set up, you can use Cupid to put your curation on your WordPress blog. And we have widgets um, that are little iframes that you can um, easily also embed on any web page. Uh, so the way we look at uh, Scoopit is we, we like to see it as an open platform, both upstream integrating with lots of different um, uh, sources, not just RSS, but Twitter, YouTube, uh, two weeks ago, we, we announced an integration um, and a partnership with SlideShare. So you can now source SlideShare presentations, a great platform for content marketers. Um, and also downstream. So downstream, we want to support um, not only social uh, networks like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, but we also have Google+, Plus, Pinterest. Uh, last week, we introduced, um, uh, we also launched a partnership with Buffer. Um, so uh, lots of uh, good feedback on that as well. So we, wanna, we want Scoopit to be a very open uh, model. We, we think that the value we bring is by, having, by bringing this curation layer and having those um, capabilities. And also helping you build a community of interests around your, your topics. 
Um, so this is also something which for us is very important. When, when you actually do all of that, um, we, we try to, to, to preserve the topic-centric model where that allows people to follow each other's topics and to enrich one another's curation. We feel over time you should look at curation not just as a uh, publishing mechanism or as a, a, a publishing tactic, but as a way to build a community uh, of people who have the same interests, uh, who are going to be also influential about your topics. I think that's really true around the things that I've curated. You know, I have I have a couple of different topics, like um, you know, social media focused topics. But I also have one that's around cancer support and for people who are you know caregivers for people with cancer. And that one's been really popular. Um, it gets a lot of shares, and you know, it, it kind of helps people have a place to have conversations. Um, I think the commenting that's being added now is is pretty cool too because that being able to comment on the page and and actually have more of a community present is a pretty useful feature. Um, I think that to me is the difference between you know you said this earlier with social with Twitter for example um, you make a post and in 30 seconds it's gone and nobody ever sees it again. Um, with something like this, there's more of a resonant stream of information, and it's all related from the viewer standpoint. So I like that. Um, I don't share my Google Reader stuff much at all, um, and honestly, my RSS feeds, Steve. I don't know how you manage a thousand of them because to me now it's all just mud. There's so much going on in there that I don't keep on top of it as much as I should. Well. It you know, it's, it's, I, I think I approach it like I approach Twitter. Uh, I mean, like I use a lot of folders, for, first of all, thematic folders. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because a bunch of the things I have are folders based on search terms through Google Alerts and through the blogs. So one might be content marketing and research or something like that kind of stuff. So I have a lot of those kinds of folders. And then I just I go in and I, I read as much as I – I probably publish about – 15 or so so links a day that aren't my own uh, blog stuff and and so I mean I'll open about 25 or 30 things and then pick the 10 or 15 I like and share it's not such a problem and when I'm done I just I start over again I don't try to keep up on it it's like Twitter you don't try to keep up on the Twitter stream you just kind right. of you, you go into the river and when you're tired of being wet you get out <laughs> it's good it's good image I like that. <laughs> Yeah, that works for me too. And um, so, you know, I, I think that's the way we're, we're looking at things as well. Um, we're, the, the, the interesting part we're, we're, we're adding to that, and I think, you know, to, to put things in, um, in, in perspective, um, what, what I like about the idea of what we're doing is we're trying to create a cycle. Um, so what I, what I mean by that is that um, what we find is that initially people start with, um, with their accounts. They, they, we have them configure their suggestions very simply by like keywords that are related to their topics, and they start receiving suggestions. But then what happens is as they start to publish, um, the social features we've built uh, will mean that some people will comment, some people will rescoop their content, um, we'll thank them for the content, we share their content, they're, they're going to start building a small community. And, and initially it starts maybe with three, four, five people. Uh, but then it builds up. And um, the interesting part that, that we like in our model is that we, we touched on something which is interesting here. If you follow 1,500 RSS feeds or if you follow 1,500 people on Twitter, it doesn't scale. Um, it, it, by that I mean that uh, you're going to have a lot of noise in there. So you get wet, you have to organize things in folder, and at some point you, you, you get out of the water. Um, we don't solve all of that in Scoopit, but something which is interesting in our topic-centric organi uh, organization, uh, in our topic-centric model, is I follow uh, close to 700 uh, Scoopit topic pages. And all of them are interesting, uh, because they're all on a specific topic that I've chosen to follow. Uh, they're all on a topic that I'm interested in. Um, and if they stop being interested, I can stop following them uh, you know, very, very easily. 
But it's not like on Twitter where if you follow me on Twitter, um, I tweet about several uh, topics. I tweet about uh, social media. I tweet about online gaming. Uh, we were discussing uh, World of Warcraft and Second Life with Janet um, <laughs> right before. Uh, I tweet. I'm a big skier, so I've, you know sometimes if I find a great skiing video, I, I can't refrain from sharing it. Uh, I tweet about entrepreneurship, and and there's no way to filter me on Twitter. Uh, but on Scoopit, you can follow any of any one of those topics without following the other ones. And so what we start. You know, what happens typically in the cycle of usage for Scoopit is that initially people like Scoopit because it's simple. And it solves the problem, it saves them time, it helps them um, create their own media in a much um, easier way than, than anything else. Uh, but over time, the reason people don't quit on Scoopit is usually as to tell us, because they, they start to build a community and they start following topics. And, and that's um, something which is precious to them because they are feeling they have really good connections with people who are uh, sharing the same interests. I, I, I'm really curious about in terms of where you see you're, you're, you're in a, uh, an interesting position. Not only do you have to think about this in terms of your product and your company and what makes sense right now, but if you were to think even beyond kind of where the product is going, you think you look into the future, you know, like even five and God forbid 10 years, you think about curation, you know, what do you think, where do you see it going in the long term? Do you have a sense uh, of what your instincts tell you where it's going from where it is today? So, so I think the big, the big um, I think curation is, is, um, is one aspect of the product and um, I don't think we're the only ones doing it. Um, to me, you know, Pinterest is a form of curation, Tumblr is a form of curation, and they're obviously much bigger. The, the trend I think that I want to be um, you know, that I think is the more meaningful to describe our vision and what we're, what we're doing is this shift from the social graph to the interest graph. Um, I think, it, again, we're not the only ones trying to capture that, but um, we're probably the most advanced for professional users. Um, if you look at, at the way we differentiate from, Tum from Tumblr and Pinterest, um, Tumblr is, and Pinterest are you know, much more about entertainment uh, than professional content. They're much more used at night and during the weekends. We're, we kind of have a, a different pattern. Uh, our traffic drops down at night and uh, during the weekends it's very strong during the day. And our, the content that gets shared on, on, on Scoopit is much more serious content uh, that people use for professional reasons. So we're, we're being used by small business owners, consultants, um, professional startups, companies. And so if you look at and, and this, the interesting part is that these professionals have a really long tail need. You know, in, in the consumer space, um, you can sometimes describe people's interest in, in, you know, in 20 categories. Actually, on Pinterest, you have 20 categories right now, or 25. And, and you're interested in music, or you're interested in shopping, you're interested in travel, and that's enough to already have a very personalized and, and pretty good experience. But in the, in the professional world, you cannot do that. Um, we've had conversations with our users, and a real estate agent in Albuquerque is not interested in real estate in New York. That's a different market, and it's not, a, it's not even the same. So if you look at all of the professionals we have, and we have CPAs, and we have um, real estate agents, we have small business owners, this is really long tail. And I think we're just at the beginning of, of tapping into that. And I think what, what we really want to be long term, and I don't know about 10 years, because <laughs> that's really long, long term for startups, but in the next two, three years, I want us to be the platform where people can, can think about, you know, if I have like a real niche, Scoopit is the platform that helps me connect with content to people who will share an interest in that niche. Um, and that, that's really the vision we have. I think that's kind of the concept of Google circles as well, you know, and, and we're finding now as we get more and more platforms, like, you know, I just joined AppNet. I don't know if you guys have joined that yet or not, but it's a, a Twitter spinoff, Twitter clone, basically. Um, as we get so many platforms that we join, you need to aggregate content and you need to be able to curate it even more. And so for me, you know, whether I'm using Scoopit or I'm using another platform, I think having ways that we can curate content, especially for our clients to be able to give them information in a way that they can 
digest because we're all getting hit by the fire hose now. Um, we started talking about it, you know, a long time ago, but now it's it's really getting bad. So yeah, and, and, and um, I like the concept. You something interesting, Janet. I think if you look at the way the evolution, uh, Twitter was, was much more about your interests than Facebook was, uh, and Google Plus is trying to be even more on your interests than than Twitter. Um, but I think fundamentally the the, the the thing we we wanted to add compared to those um, to those platforms is that circles are still something which are uh, people centric. You put people in circles, and again, you don't have that filter. So if you have me on a filter on a on a circle in Google Plus, you might have me you know put me in a social media circle, in an entrepreneur circle, or whatever. But you're going to have everything I publish. Um, it's not going to be filtered by topics, and and we feel that. Especially in the professional world, um, you know, for long tail stuff, um, we hope we have a model that works better. And right now, the traction we're getting and the fact we're, you know, we're, we, go, we just launched last November and we're, we're growing 30% a month tells us that there's something in the topic centric, topic centric model we have, which is very appealing, especially for professionals. Okay. Well, let's wrap up. So, everybody, um, one tip if you could give our viewers one tip to take away from today's discussion, what would it be? Well, I actually, my tip wasn't about today's discussion. Discussion. It was actually about something separate. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if anybody knows it. Uh, Jerry Brown, uh, California's governor, just signed in into law uh, something really important. I don't know if people remember, but back in March, there was a famous uh, national case about uh, correction, uh, correctional officers asking for passwords to Facebook and others. And there's been a number of, of uh, cases where uh, potential employers want to basically look through all your uh, social accounts. And so just a couple days ago, Jerry Brown, uh, on Thursday, yesterday, uh, Jerry Brown assigned into law two bills which now make it illegal, at least in California, for universities or employers to ask you for passwords or access to any of your social accounts, including email, and yeah, so I know that, yeah, I think it's kind of a big deal. I, I, I suspect it, would, it passed unanimously in August and the thing, and he signed it into law. Um, but it's a big deal. There, there are some of the security companies are are upset. Those are the only people really opposing it right now. Um, people in charge of like kind of tracking employees' behavior because their their feeling is. But now they can't look into Facebook and, and and these other accounts and see if if you're talking bad about the company, which is kind of ironic because that's exactly what the point is. It's none of their business what you do in your in your uh, in your private time and space. I feel so. I thought that was really good. It's good for people to know. It's uh, and I expect this will be roll out across the country as other states start adopting the, these laws. Yeah, I, I think that's a really great law, and and I I wrote a post on the whole Facebook thing where employers were asking for passwords literally in an interview, just turning the laptop around and saying, "Put your password in so I can see what you're saying on Facebook." And um, you know, I think if people think that they have privacy on the internet, they're crazy. But I think they should be at least allowed the illusion of having some privacy on the internet. I, I would agree, but it's something about having you know handing over the keys to to your your personal stuff that that truly is a, an intrusion beyond. Absolutely, you know. I totally agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my tip would be to, uh, and it isn't also also it isn't about curation. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about AppNet, and I don't know if you people. People um, have gone to it yet, but it's app.net, and it's actually a paid version of Twitter. And when I signed up, you know, I went in, and it's like Twitter in the old days. Very, very wild, wild west. Everybody's having conversations. Um, the only people that are there are the people who really are interested in geekdom, basically. So I fit right in. And uh, it's pretty cool. So it might be something that you want to check out. Um, I like it a lot. So, Janet, do you think we should integrate with them? Do you see a value? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, IFTTT already integrates with them. And interestingly enough, you can post from there to Twitter, just not the other way around. Um, so it's it's pretty interesting. Pretty fun.
Yeah. Yeah, so my, my tip would be, um, um, I, I, would, I would suggest uh, if you haven't tried it, um, we integrated with them last week, as I said, uh, would be to try Buffer. Um, mm. I, I don't know if you, I think Steve, you mentioned it, but uh, that would be my tip. Um, I think they have a great product. Um, yeah. It's really useful for um, not only to get your, your um, social media sharing um, more in control and more efficient by scheduling them throughout the day and make sure you can reach people at different times. Um, but it gives you some pretty cool analytics as well. And now it's even integrated with Scoopit, so <laughs> and they're really cool guys. So uh, we, we have an excellent relationship with the team. So if you haven't yeah. tried this yet, I would suggest you try it. I agree. Scoop it's just a really uh, excuse me. Scoop it too. But Buffalo is a great <laughs> tool because it, it really is. It's you know it's a one. If you use the little button, you know, the little applet, you know, you literally come to the page, you look at it, you click, and, and what's really nice is like I do all my curation at the same time, you know, or, or you know, I, I mean, at the same time, and it's easier for me to schedule, you know, to go click and have it schedule automatically, and and I can schedule tons of stuff really easily once I read it and I, I approve it. It's click click, you know. It's click click click, and, and it's all scheduled for me. And that's it's great. So it's, it's a smart integration on your part. Yeah. No, that's something about our users told us. They they tend to work in patterns and maybe do all of the art curation in the morning, spend some time doing that. And they were saying, ah, oh, I don't want to come back, and I want I want I want this to be uh, impacting people all over all throughout the day. So yeah. Yeah, I absolutely so agree too. I, I don't mean to badmouth them, and, and is but yeah, and I love I love Hootsuite. But I have no idea why they didn't include that as functionality. To me, that just seems so. They just so, don't. They're too slow yeah. for it. Uh, Hootsuite, Hootsuite actually has a scheduling uh, system now. I haven't tried it, but they. I they have, I, and I and I, I love Hootsuite. Let me be real clear. I, I use it. Big fan. I pay for the pro version. But what it is is it's not Buffer. I mean, uh, and the key for anybody who hasn't used Buffer, Buffer uses you, you can predefine time. So like, if you want to send something out at this time, this time you you preset a schedule. And, and then the stuff you, you put into your queue fills to the next open slot. Uh, the, the tool that Hootsuite has basically guess at optimization, and it does, frankly, a crap job, and it, and it does it at times that I can't pre-select. And so it's, it's not like Buffer, and, and it's not a, it just kind of staggers stuff sometimes occasionally. So yeah. I, wish they, I wish they had included a Buffer-like option. So. Yeah, I wish they'd integrated Buffer too, because I use Hootsuite pretty religiously, but I also use Buffer all the time. And certainly we use it for clients as well, that it's just so much easier to go through and do your curation in blocks. And I think, you know, so many people do that. You don't want to flood your stream with all this great stuff and waste it. Yeah. You want to spread it out and distribute it. And yeah, Buffer's just awesome. Yeah, just I, awesome. I, I, love, I love you, Hootsuite, but you guys really screwed up. <laughs> and yay buffer yay buffer <laughs> okay we're going to wrap this up um, the video will be live on YouTube and it will also be live on the blog post attached to the FridayHangout.com um, we're going to go ahead and end the broadcast now thank you so much for coming today it was Pleasure really great to meet you. thank you nice to meet you Steve